one of the key principles is going to be this false grip. Okay, so we have to think about get, getting into our end position, i.e. above the ring, before we've even started. Okay, so has anyone heard of the term false grip? I yeah. understand yeah. maybe what it alludes to. Okay, so in order to get a false grip, what we're thinking about is taking our palm and rotating over the top. Okay, so rather than coming from underneath the ring, we want to be taking a rolling round. So if I was to do that here, so a lot of us have a dip, a lot of us have a pull up. So if I was starting above the rings, what I'm thinking about, nice and deep, underneath. So notice how now I'm in this false grip position. I'm basically hanging on the heel of my palm. Okay. So that then gives us the ability or capacity to go from underneath the ring over the top. If I just start underneath, i.e. just using the fingers, then I'm never, no matter how hard I pull, I'm never going to get above the top of the ring. Okay. So by using this false grip, so we go from the top of the ring, rotate through. So initially it's going to feel odd. Okay, there's no, no denying that. So, but I'm applying the ring to the fat of the palm. I'm using what, what God gave us and using that. So from the top, rotate through. Now, when I'm in this position, initially, don't go full bore and start hanging full weight on that. We want to just experience this position. So potentially, we'll do it on lower rings and then just start to acclimatize ourselves. Then we're going to look to pull, pull from this position. So whether it's a 45 degree pull or using one foot, we're going to think about pulling nice and high. Now initially, there's three stages to think about. The pull, so the pull up, the higher we make the pull, the less we have to spend in that transition. So the same when Tim was talking about handstands, when we do like the frog stand, the higher we get a hip, the less time we spend in the awkward bit in the middle. So what does that look like with a muscle up? So here, full grip, big pull. So the higher the pull, I'm already in the bottom of that dip position. This question of coming through, driving up. Okay. So essentially you've got to be able to get out of that deep dip and control the rings. You've got to be able to pull in that, what Owen said, that sort of awkward position of being in a false grip where the, the, the wrist is cocked at sort of 90 degrees because you want the hand on the ring, as he showed, where you're going to be at the end. You can't rotate your hand on the ring because the ring's going to move. So what we do is we put the hand on the ring and rotate the wrist around the hand. And that fat pad he was talking about going across is in here, rather than where you'd normally grab something in your fingers. Ignore my dodgy fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Messed up pinky. But initially, it's just about getting comfortable in that position, okay? So don't worry about what's going to happen. So from position, from the pull to the transition into the dip, just think about pulling nice and high. The rings will do the rest. That's the nice thing about using the rings. We can basically just come through, come through the center, okay? We're not having to worry about a metal bar banging us in the head. We can use that to our advantage. So just think about initially, we're going to, we'll use these rings that are low down, so 45 degrees and moving into or between the rings, okay? In fact, we'll show you on these. Might make a bit more sense. So I can do, if you're comfortable, like you can do your pull up in that position, or I can do a row. So I grab the ring high, slide it down, cock the wrist like I said, and I can get used to rowing in this position where it's across the base of my palm. I can gradually make it harder by taking my feet further forward, so I become lower. Job is to make sure thumb touches the chest, because that transition where we go through into the dip, your thumb needs to be at your chest. Yeah. Um, if we practice that with ring dips, so we've got the two elements. Pulling, and the pushing out of the dip. The higher you pull, the deeper you dip, the easier that middle section. Yeah. Your choice whether you want to do practice in the row position or, or ultimately, can we do it in a, in a pull-up position? So opposed to the handstand where there is a real skill involved in this, <coughs> this is just laying the foundations, the prerequisites. So if you get the pull-up high enough and the, deep dip, uh, the dip deep enough, then you're going to be in a good position.
okay? No skill to it, but that's providing you've got the strength and the mobility through your shoulders, okay? So be patient. That's it, elbow's oh, nice and tight. So what are you actually yeah. gonna go from like a yeah. like more neutral position? Yeah, that's it, that's yeah. precisely it. So elbows to the side, and then think about pulling yourself to the rings. So doing like a chin up. So one thing, I'll just give you a quick, yeah. so keep the elbows tight. Tight, yeah. yeah. That's it. Oh. Good. Elbows a little bit more tight on this one. Because what you need to think about, good, better. Yeah. What you need to think about, when you're doing a dip, Yeah. You're not going to be out here. Yeah. The elbows are going to be like slap bang tight to your body. Right. So we need to maximize the pull yeah. to, to dip. Right. So what we can't afford is to lose energy or efficiency yeah. going out wide. Out wide. So okay. we're just trying to make it as smooth as possible. I like with the gymnastics, you want to go from A to B as yeah. smooth as clean as possible. Okay. But initially, obviously, there's lots to think about. Just, just get yeah. used to laying up, but keeping elbows nice and tight. Do you need Best one yet. Good. Really good. Let's have two more of those. Good. One more. Pull. Brilliant. Really good. Okay. No. Really good. So what you can actually do is make it harder for yourself by taking feet further away. Because obviously everything's leverage. So if you're here. Pull. Same principle. Elbows tight. Lay in the flat of the palm. Okay. Big pull. Slow down. Okay. So that's it. Making it more difficult. Good. Big pull. Good. Yeah, excellent. Two. Let's have two more. Good. Last one. Super. Right, guys. So if you've got a sec, so some of you pick that up really, really quickly, which is nice, and you sort of get into a stage now, again, not to, um, not to call anyone out, but you, you're finding this really easy. So pulling through and actually getting to here, and it's like, oh, oh, is that a muscle up? Have I done, have I done a muscle up? Okay. So what we're thinking about doing, so you can really start to feel the instability of the rings. So we're gonna look at that top position now. Okay, so keeping everything really nice and tight, and this is why we don't want to leak any sort of efficiency or, or that, that movement integrity as we come through. So as we come through, everything's got to stay nice and tight because we're very difficult to generate force out here, right? So if we do the opposite, so if we come from the top now, thinking about locking that bum down, elbows nice and tight, tailbone underneath, okay? So that hollow body position, see what that feels like okay so initially don't be surprised if your brain starts trying to do the maths you're doing this okay but eventually over time you'll learn okay you learn that position so just think about keeping elbows nice and tight if you need to bring the rings down a little bit more so you're closer to the ground or get a little step just so you can feel that position okay elbows nice and tight over the top and you can really start to feel the pressure coming through the bottom of that part Okay. If that starts to feel good, and very quickly some of you will get this, start to think about coming into a deep dip. Okay. Even if you haven't got the strength to come back out of that, elbows nice and tight, slowly come down into that dip position. Okay. So if you start to feel any sort of discomfort through your pec, shoulders, etc., maybe roll it out or maybe just step away for the moment. Okay. So don't feel like you need to force through something. Let pain be your guide, right? Now, thumb Especially. To, thumb, to, like, thumb to chest, look at that, just look at that deep position. Even if I don't do it, you just put his feet on the floor. Just point when he gets down, when he comes down to the bottom, he's getting comfortable at being. That needs to be comfortable, that needs to be happy place. Have you seen Happy Gilmore? Happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that's where you're going to try and get to. Like, let your brain have that. Don't like brush being in that position. <coughs> be the, like, that is your safe place. What do you say? Your pull <clears throat> needs to match that. So look at, just do it one more time, look where his thumbs are in relation to the height of his chest. Mm. His pull's gonna come to that same shape. So yeah? that's the position. So as you're coming down, theoretically now, you're strongly in that eccentric. Okay, into that dip. That's the transition that we're looking for. <coughs> but don't, don't rush to that unless you feel really comfortable. Okay, so initially, rings nice and tight. Even if you just keep one foot on the floor, okay? We can't just chop a leg off and lose weight, so how do we, how do we manage that weight? Oh, it's nice and tight. If that feels good, 
Most deep depth. Okay. Have a go. Some of you are struggling with, with getting high enough, okay? So we need to go from a position that we can happily generate force from, okay? So obviously you saw me coming from the full, so rings externally rotated to pull, okay? I need to be comfortable getting into that bottom position, okay? Now, don't feel like you need to go from full dead hang. So a lot of us are more used to generating force like for a pull-up with a slightly bent arm. Okay, so notice how I've got potentially taking some of the weight off. Jack, we've got some, uh, got some bands. So potentially if you're struggling with that pull, we need to create an environment that we can learn, but we may not have the strength just yet. Okay, so if you're struggling with that pull, either use a band or go with bent arms. Okay, so I've already got a slight bend in my arms. I'm not having to go from full straight arm. So bent arm, and I'm having to pull really high. So one of the cues I'll be giving out is take, think about putting your thumb into your armpit. Okay or trying to, to here, okay? So also, the rings, some of you are also creating a gate, like, so like creating a barrier. So when we're getting into this bottom position, pull in high and rotate the rings. Remember, the, these can go in full, full rotation, okay? Full oscillation, so use that capacity. So what we'll be doing now is really concentrating on trying to create this, this happy place, getting comfortable, pulling nice and high. Remember, the higher the pull and the deeper the dip, the less time we spend in that funky bit in the middle, that transition, okay? So if we grab a... Um, so just do one, so just pull, just do that, just pull the bones more at the top. Yeah, yep. It's like you pull and pause, like just, just put that idea of the thumb to the chest, He's always like starting to get through his transition. Even one step that's his fully in transition. Even one step he's there, just thumb. Can he hold? Can he hold there? Look, elbows close to the side, thumb to chest. That's a happy place for him. He's holding it whilst I'm talking. And then that's, for me, that would be annoying because I'm making mistakes. <laughs> but he's happy. That's, that's easy for him. It's not like he pulls up and can't stay there and falling back down. The same thing of our frog stand. It's not like um, I'm struggling to stay in my frog stand. What's going to happen? Take one knee up. You're going to collapse down. When you, if you can't hold and stay there, when you try to transition forward, you're going to start falling down. Whereas we've got to stay high. So that is going to be high and comfort comfortable. You know what I mean? Like, I'm strong there. And my deep dip, which I'm going to match, I'm going to be strong there. Um, you can bring the rings up a little bit, some of the working on the rings. I can create a cradle for myself. So underneath my bum, you've got a big ass like me, it's beautiful. Go on your hamstring. Um, and just goes on top. And as long as you um, as long as you don't let go of the ring and I've clamped it underneath, I'm happy. I come down and cock the wrist just so I make sure I am still in false grip. Because I'm now close to the floor, I'm gonna be in a little bit of an L sit position. It's not a problem. I'm just getting used to pulling and pausing at the top. And when I pause at the top, thumb is touching the chest. And I'm constantly thinking about applying force down into the ring. I can do the same thing for my dips if I was struggling to get back up. Goes across, make a little cradle, jump up and put my knees in. At the top, and I turn the rings out a little bit. But then when I drop it into the bottom, I get comfortable. That bottom position, the band's gonna help me just get out a little bit more smoothly. Yeah, for those that need a little bit of additional help going through on that. So you still want to be working hard. You don't want the band doing all the work, nor do you want to be firing up and through the bands and headbutting the ceiling. Okay, you want to be in a position where you can do two or three, but it's not doing all the work for you. Okay, just learning that pattern without actually uh, absolutely blasting yourself, knackering yourselves out. Okay, have a go. Let's see, big pull. So just think about really pulling nice and high. Yeah. Yeah. But you were really close, but you see how the rings didn't move with you, so they almost sat in front of you. Yeah. We need them to, to work so that you can then tuck them under your armpit. Have another go. Just think about pulling really nice and high. Pull, 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 pull. Thumbs touching chest. Good. So for you, you'll connect now when we when we go from the top down because yeah. you'll be able to connect that dip into that rotation yeah yeah don't knock yourself out this will be plenty of time 
<laughs> Go on, one more. So think about elbows nice and tight. And then you're going to basically trace that peck from outside to in. Not bad, not bad. Just watch it a little bit through yeah, the right. Yeah. But, that's, but that's the challenge for the scapula to stay on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because as soon as that wants to wander, you, it will lose it. So it's, it's constantly, you're not trying to lose any height, but you're moving your, your weight from in front to behind. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all that's happening. When you did that negative in the first demo, like, I never thought about going through it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just, again, you're trying to, trying to facilitate that, yeah, yeah. that learning. Yeah, definitely. If, if you haven't got the strength. I reckon Owen will blast up this. Look at this. Nice. Yeah, so like external rotation, so you'll feel that like a real stretch coming through your forearm. That was nice though. So for you, it actually makes more sense to add more, a bit more of a load. Because when you were doing it on there, you were like, just basically coming straight through. Like, oh, it's, I can't quite feel what's it. And yeah. So, but 100%. So your pull is really good. So really uh, lie on that to get you nice and high, so you don't have to spend long in that middle bit. But that was exactly as you did, mate. Mate, that's great. Good. And then same on the way down, think about going from the outside of the peck, trace it to the end. For reps, keep them tight, good. As you start to fatigue, it's just starting to wander a little bit. Good, that's it, step away. Being low down, so that the band can go under the bum, means we're going to be in a bit of an L-sit position. That L-sit position isn't a bad thing, because when the feet go down, it helps me rock forward in between the rings. So he's going to go through, he's sat on the band, making sure he's got in his false grip. You can use your feet into the floor to just let yourself adjust. Then his job is thumb to chest, don't mess about aggressively, <laughs> three in between the rings. Because the first one we did, you pause, yeah. and then when <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get rid of him, it's like, use the pull. So you pull, through. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. That's the message that you're talking about. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> links the two together. So just, uh, put your feet down, adjust your false grip. This time, I want you to pull, go through, and find that happy place, the bottom of the deep dip. Don't rush, don't rush to get out of the deep dip. Yeah, Good. and then get out. Good. Why? Because that's the most difficult bit. So like, his brain's going like, I'll get to right now, is it? And he's like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> and then, and then it's a case of getting rid of the red band. Red band doesn't help much, it's just a little nudge through. Yeah, Anybody? so a few of you, so a few of you are using on the high ring, like, just come down, jump onto some bearings. Let yourself do the full thing, like Bob. You look like you're so close. I'm like feeling one today. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make one point, guys. So he kind of just links it all together. If I was um, just giving Ellie some, Ellie just jump back on there a bit. So when you came into the, the transition, anybody see what's happening up in here, which makes it look like it's not as happy as it could be? So elbows are finishing out somewhere here. Like just put your hands down. I'm going to use this example. Ellie works at computers. <laughs> that means Ellie gets tight in here. So part of my programming cueing thing would be some more rev, like range of movement here, bringing the shoulders back. So just jump on the floor. You know I'm using this example. Do you? Sure. Okay, so sit on the floor and do that seated shoulder extension that we did before. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we would like, it's not, not everyone's going to get fingers together, but you, but you can see straight away, I, the point I made yesterday about the movement, do what's hard. As soon as I said do that seat extension, she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> if I pick something good, he'd be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> showing off time. Um, so that, that position there is going to help those shoulders come back. It's going to help the chest posture. We're going to look at some horizontal pulling stuff tomorrow. So when he comes through that transition, he's not here, which is not great. The front of the shoulder's right in the, in the, the head of the shoulder's right in the front of the socket. He's here. So he comes through, and if the rings just go bang, like Owen did, they stay tight. As soon as we screw into some hit some restrictions, it's just it's difficult for us to get through the rings. So he's probably strong enough to do it. We might not have the range of movement, but what a lot of people just go bully strength, 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 and actually just go and roll your shoulders out, stretch them out, and might just get it because it's a movement issue, not a strength issue. 
beautiful thing about calisthenics, you can't hide from the whole system. And the motivations that you want to do a muscle of them may be, may be the motivation you need to actually sort out your junky shoulders, yeah. rather than yeah, just someone just saying, about, uh, you, need, you spend too much time sitting at a desk, you need to roll your, you need to work on your shoulder posture, and you're like, oh, and then you're, <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to do a muscle up, yeah, okay, I'll do it for a muscle up, no problem. Yeah. If you like me. <laughs> Thank you.